Welcome to the month of June, 30 days old about gin. Shining a spotlight on those that will make you grin. Fun facts and proper tastings and cocktails Friday afternoons. Discover many different brands and be influenced by me. Some for old. Well, hello everyone, and here I am, Psalm for All. You are all very welcome here on this, my fifth day of June, right? That's my annual 30-day salute to gin during the month of June. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, today also kicks off the first of this year's product showcases and tastings. Yes, folks, throughout the month of June, there are not only cocktail recipes and food pairing ideas that I share and fun facts, but I also do product showcases and proper tastings, and I provide an unbiased review and tasting of each. Right, so good reminder, I'm not affiliated with any of the products that are showcased here. With that said, today we're off to merry old England for a London dry style gin, right? In fact, this whole first week of June, or first full week of June, I'm going to be talking about English and UK gins. And in reality, that makes a lot of sense, given that the present day gin that we know um, all really came about due to the English. So gin is based on the Dutch Geneva, and you've heard me talk about that uh, in years gone by. Um, which was a, an alcoholic spirit that English sailors discovered when serving alongside or coming across Dutch sailors in the 1600s. Um, the English were quick to try and figure out how to do this on their own and to replicate the spirit. They used some of the same ingredients and some of the same distilling techniques, but their formulas tended to be lighter in body, um, and with a bit more of a citrus forward approach. So today I have Ford's Gin, right? Not the automaker, this is the gin, Ford's Gin. And it's a relative, very small R, relative newcomer in the gin scene uh, in terms of actual product, but there's a lot of history and there's a lot of knowledge behind this brand. Simon Ford, uh, created his Forge Gin back in 2013. So it's been around for about 10 years, although it's new to Ontario, where I live. And Mr. Ford uh, was a previous US brand ambassador for beef eaters uh, for many years and very well respected individual. When he decided to create this gin, he sought out some help and he said to Charles Maxwell, Yes, the eminent Charles Maxwell that you've uh, heard me talk about before. He said to Mr. Maxwell, I want to create a gin that is a very versatile, cocktail-friendly gin. So not just a gin just for one drink or just to be on its own, but I want a gin that can be used in many different cocktails all over the place. Mr. Maxwell obliged, um, which lends some gravitas to this. You know, Mr. Maxwell is a fifth generation master distiller. And I've talked about him before, so if that name is familiar, in prior years in June, I've talked about how Mr. Maxwell uh, was involved in helping the good people at Valley of Mother of God, which is Canada's super premium gin. Um, and he helped uh, them, those folks at Valley of Mother of God, to perfect their recipe. Um, and it's delicious, as you've heard me talk about. Um, so having Mr. Maxwell along for the ride uh, really lends a lot of gravitas um, to Forge Gin just right away out of the gates and also lets you know it's it's going to be a serious gin. Okay, so Forge Gin. It's actually owned present day by Brown Foreman um, and that's a spirits company that's US owned and they have other brands under their wings such as Herodura Tequila and they've got Finlandia Vodka, Diplomatical Rum whole bunch of other brands, and they've got Forge Gin in their brand. But the gin itself is distilled at the Thames Distillery in London, England, which is coincidentally where Mr. Maxwell works. 
So not overly complex in recipe, right? This gin boasts nine different uh, globally sourced ingredients. Um, and those ingredients are first steeped in the stills for about 15 hours before being then distilled, actual distillation occurring in copper stills that are custom made. Um, they, and they do that distillation for five hours. So, you know, good bit of time, but they're not done there. Then they take that finished product and they ship it over to Scotland to have the 100% proof alcohol cut down to 45% ABV with some Scottish spring water. So while it may not be overly complex in terms of the actual recipe and ingredients, it's fairly labor intensive, right? There's a lot of care and a lot of labor that goes into this, usually signs of a good quality gin. Okay, so what is in here? So I said nine, so just before we dive in, What's, what's in here? Well, I did say globally sourced, and, you know, they're not kidding when they say that. There is Italian uh, juniper, Italian orris root. There is Spanish lemon peel, Haitian and Moroccan orange, Romanian coriander, Chinese jasmine, Polish angelica, Turkish grapefruit, um, and some Indonesia uh, cassia bark. So, again, all over the map, literally, with ingredients for this gin. Time to smell and taste. So first go to acclimate our nose. So I do the one, two, three, four, and then I take my sniff. Hmm, it's very nice. Right away, it's all about the citrus. There's lemon, there's orange, grapefruit's coming through. You know, all really forward, but very clean, uh, very inviting, nothing harsh, nothing, nothing aggressive here. There's some resiny juniper in here, of course. Some floral lavender, maybe a touch of violet, along with some very soft, earthy spice notes. So maybe a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of, a little bit of earth itself. Very fun on the nose. Now, time to taste. Sanja. We always swish it around, right? Want to coat those five flavor receptors we have. Elegant and clean. Um, there's a bit of creaminess, a bit of richness, but it's not a heavy or fat gin by any stretch. Again, very inviting on the palate as well, right? The flavor profile follows the nose, so I, I get a lot of citrus, get that pine, um, get a little bit of that spice, that baking spice, that cinnamon, that earthiness. And really, they're all playing very, very well together. Um, very well balanced. There's a very, very slight heat on the gums. Um, not a surprise, 45% ABV. That's almost to be expected. But it's just very, very, very s subtle. And, you know, if you're having it not straight up like I'm doing, you're putting it in a cocktail, you won't taste that at all. Overall, I'd say it's quite lovely. Uh, and would indeed, in my opinion, be very versatile in cocktails, um, things such as Negronis, of course, the standard G&T, uh, a martini, um, and, and tons more. You can do gimlets, you can do all kinds of stuff with this gin. It'll play nicely with a lot of different um, adjuncts. So here in Ontario, you can find this at the LCBO, of course. It retails for a very reasonable $42.95. Across Canada, in other provinces, um, I'm seeing it for anywhere between $42 and $45, $46. Um, still, good deal at that price. And for my U.S. friends and followers, absolute bargain at $36 um, as an average price that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a couple of states have it a little bit cheaper. So, bargain um, for in the $35 range. So, there we have it, folks. The first gin showcase of June 2023 and a top-notch way to start off the tasting aspect of June, in my opinion. I invite you to join me tomorrow for another Gin Taste Showcase, and don't forget to follow along on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, SOM, S-O-M-M, -M, number 4 A-L-L, SOM for all. And also, please share my post with all your juniper-loving friends. Until next time, please be safe, be well, and cheers from SOM for all.